All right, welcome back to another video from MBMRC. Uh, this is Brian, and for those of you who don't know, this is a channel shared between my dad, Marty, uh, my brother, Matthew, and myself. Uh, my dad and my brother, they fly strictly fixed-wing glow airplanes. Uh, I fly fixed-wing electric, and uh, I kind of dabble in quads a little bit. So uh, today I'll be doing a review of the uh, DJI Phantom 3. I've owned this thing for a while now, and I've uh, watched several reviews on it, actually, before I bought it. And the general consensus was people that had little to no experience with the quads really liked it. And the people who fly quads more frequently, people that raise quads, stuff like that, uh, didn't really like it so much. Um, so I decided either way I was going to pick it up, because what I wanted to do with it, uh, I thought it would be a great tool to uh, kind of record some video of the fixed wings back there and uh, put them up on YouTube. So uh, I really hope that I can use this as a tool in the future for you guys and I hope that you enjoy it. Um, camera quality is great, you know, everybody, that's what that's what these guys are known for is their camera quality. So, um, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you what my thoughts are on it. I, I'll tell you right now I've got five quads. Uh, one of them are actually the, the Phantom, so four other quads other than this one. Uh, my most recent one was the Blade Vortex 250 and I'm having a ball with that. So I'm going to just go ahead and give you my thoughts and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, first of all, this is a really well-designed piece. Uh, build quality is second to none. Um, the only complaint I could really have about the way that it's built or anything, um, the landing gear is what I would call it. You might call it the legs or something else. Um, that could be a little bit more sturdy, maybe. Um, but I've logged seven hours worth of flights on this thing, and I've yet to have an issue, so I doubt that that's really even considered a negative. Um, to me, DJI is like the Apple, per se, of the drone world. Uh, I'm sitting here doing this video on iOS, so I don't mean that in a bad way whatsoever, but some of you may see it like that, and I completely understand where you're coming from. Uh, it's a great drone, it flies phenomenal, and as long as you don't wreck it, uh, you shouldn't have any problems. But uh, what if you do wreck it? Uh, that's kind of where it's bad to not be the apple of the drone world, because to be completely honest with you, as much as I love this thing, uh, if you wreck it just short of busting a prop or something like that, uh, you're not going to take this thing down in your basement or fix it. Um, you're going to have to ship it to DJI, send it to them. They're going to have to fix it for you. It's going to take a month, month and a half. Um, depending on whether you got DJI care, those things like that, you might have to pay for it, you might not. I'm not sure how all that works. Uh, coming from a family who scratch builds planes and you know quite frequently has to fix them after a wreck, I'd say about 70% of the time we can actually fix them. Uh, that's something I don't really like about this quad. Um... You know, it would be nice to be able to fix it, but uh, unfortunately sometimes you can't do that. But that being said, I don't see how you could wreck this thing. Uh, it would be extremely hard for even, you know, an average or beginner quad pilot, I think, to wreck this. Uh, don't get me wrong, it can definitely happen. Uh, you should always fly it in the safest manner possible, you know, keep it in the line of sight and all that. But uh, again, no matter what flight mode you have it in, you have bank angle limits, uh, you can't roll it, you can't flip it, nothing like that. Not aerobatic at all, so if you're looking for something like that, I hate to say it, but this isn't really for you. Uh, like I said, I want to get something that got some pretty good footage, and I got that. It, that's what it's good at, that's what it does. Uh, it maxes out about 42 mile an hour, so it kind of struggles, honestly, to, to keep the plane in frame while you're uh, chasing it, in lack of a better word, I guess. Uh, I found it's a lot easier to sit in one spot and follow the plane with the camera. Um, that's the thing with this, is it feels like you're Everybody says it. I hate to use that term again, but it, it feels like you're pushing a camera through the sky. It doesn't really feel like you're flying a quad. And I know that sounds simple, but I do want to say one thing about that. Uh, before you go out and buy one of these, just because it sounds easy, uh, definitely pick up like a Blade Nano QX or like even an Inductrix or something like that. Because it's a pretty big initial investment. I mean, you're going to spend a minimum of 500 bucks, And some of these Phantom 3s are up still close to $1,000. Uh, get a Blade Nano. I think your initial investment's like 60 bucks, And you can fly that in sport mode. You know, you can you can do some cool stuff with that thing. The Inductrix is an awesome beginner quad. And that's a little bit more pricey, about 120 bucks. But you got FPV. Uh, you got all that stuff. And you can actually learn on it. Uh... You learn on something like that, and then you can pick this Phantom up, and you can fly it. You, it it'll be a breeze for you to fly this Phantom. Um, back whenever my dad showed my brother and I both how to fly fixed-wing planes, uh, the second plane he taught us to fly was actually a Sig Wonder, which is a quickie 
little, you know, 15 size glow plane. And uh, I'm very happy that he he put us into that, so, you know, transitioning us into a different direction. Because you learn how to hold on to a SIG Wonder, you can fly just about any plane out there. And I I think that's that same school of, sh of thought should be applied toward toward the mini quads. Um, I just, uh, I definitely suggest getting something relatively inexpensive if you're just starting out. Um, again, much like Apple, you're not going to do any modding to this thing. Uh, they, DJI gave you everything that they thought you should have, and they made it as close to impossible to add anything else as that they possibly could. And they did it purposely, and I don't blame them. I mean, when you're putting something in the hands of a person that can fly it anywhere from one to three miles away, uh, bad things can happen. And, uh, it's unfortunate, but not everybody's a good person, but that's the world we live in. Um, they give you a lot of freedom with it, and, uh, it's something to be careful with, and just don't ruin it for the rest of us. Um... The camera and the gimbal are great, and you guys should know that. I mean, that's what this thing really shines on, is its its ability to take good aerial photography. Uh, it's, a, it's a great quad, but the, the camera is really what shines here. Um, the one thing I do want to say is a lot of times, and I'm sure as you can see it in the footage that I got playing in the background here, if you're really pushing it forward, uh, you're really climbing a lot, and you're trying to get that speed off, you're going to see the props in the in the footage. And it's not that big of a deal. But uh, that's definitely something that can happen, and I don't know if it happens with all of them, but I'm pretty sure that it probably does. Um, also, the gimbal lock. Um, this thing comes with, uh, it's a plastic piece that goes on the camera, and it locks the gimbal so it can't move, which is a great idea. However, the thing that I don't like with it is it seems like it's actually harder on the gimbal putting it on than it is for the camera just to hang there freely. So I would actually suggest going on Amazon and finding a gimbal lock for this that's got, you know, good reviews. And uh, I would buy that one. But uh, I would definitely suggest a gimbal lock for this thing. Uh, also, you know, while we're talking about things that come in the box. Uh, first thing, guys, we're not going to do unboxing videos. I mean, if, if you want to see it, we'll do it, but... It, if you want to see what's in the box, go watch another video. I, the box would be made of solid gold, and it wouldn't make this thing fly any better. I mean, we're we're going to tell you about what it flies like. So, uh, first thing out of the box is you're going to get a LiPo. Um, it's actually a little bit frustrating for those of us that are in the hobby, because it's pricey. It's about $160 battery, American dollars, and uh, it's a 4-cell. It's a 4400 mAh 4-cell. And you can get pick one of those up from Hobby King for a plane for like 70 bucks, I think. So, uh, yeah, that's a little bit of a turnoff. And the people that go and buy these at Best Buy, they don't know that. So, they, you know, I think the DJI might take a little bit of a, uh advantage of those people. But that's, you know, none of my... And the thing is, whether it's a good battery or not, you're getting 19 to 23 minutes out of it per flight. Depending on how hard you are on it. And, I mean, that's a great great flight time for anything so I'm not going to complain about that um it came with four replacement props which honestly again seven hours of log flight I haven't even opened the bag up yet um I don't know how you could wreck this thing unless you lost signal or you hit another one that you didn't know was there um obviously it comes with a bunch of literature about the FAA and how they want you to register and stuff which you should do um, I've been licensed through the AMA for a while now, and it actually seems like the people at DJI like that whenever you go to register your quad, which you have to do before you fly it. I can almost guarantee that there's going to be a firmware update, which will take about 45 minutes. Uh, the battery is going to come with about a 20% charge, which I'm sure is intentional, so you at least skim the safety and regulation material that is provided with the quad. Uh, last but not least, they give you a transmitter. Uh, yeah, transmitter, not a controller. Uh, most of the people that buy these on Best Buy and then do reviews of them, they call them controllers. <laughs> I have to say it's a bit of a burden carrying my Spectrum DX8 and the DJI transmitter to the field. Uh, there, I mean, there's not really much to this thing. The gimbals definitely feel cheaper than the Spectrum. Most people will be fine with it. They won't notice it. Uh, it seems to be built well. Uh, it seems like it could take a couple good drops. Uh, it, it gets great reception. I mean, I don't lose signal with mine until about 6,000 feet out. So, uh, I'd say that's pretty impressive. I mean, it is on 5.8 gigahertz. Um, it's got a built-in battery, which honestly don't like, because once the battery's junk, I'd assume that means you're buying a new transmitter. And, uh, once again, the Apple of drones, that's not going to be cheap. 
Uh, you'll get close to about three hours out of the transmitter on a charge. And it'll take you almost an hour to charge the transmitter and maybe a little bit longer than that to charge the flight battery if they're both completely dead. Uh, you know, we try to use the 80% rule on batteries and speed controllers and all that stuff, so I uh, definitely wouldn't fly the quad below 20 or 30% uh, whenever you got it out. So, um, speaking about that, uh, the thing that impressed me about the whole unit other than, you know, the video quality is the app. It's innovative. They've got a Google Maps overlay, which comes in handy. Uh, if your video cuts out, which has happened to me twice at a long distance, um, you can you can find your way back home. Or you can just hit the return to home button, but yeah, either way. Um, it records all your flights, uh, both video-wise, if you want it to, and on the map. On the map, it's standard. It always does it. It's great. You can go back, revisit your flight, see how high you were, see what your battery was, how many satellites you had, all that stuff. Um, it's full battery telemetry, it's integrated right into the app, so you can see if the cells are balanced right, what voltage they are each at. Uh, it'll even show you how many minutes of flight you have left depending on how hard you're running the quad. Uh, you do occasionally get some errors, uh, especially if you're going someplace new, you got to calibrate the IM using the compass, which isn't that big of a deal. Uh, but the errors sometimes keep you from doing something that uh, is either illegal or not so intelligent, so that's not a bad thing either. Um, all in all, it's a great piece. Uh, you get a really good product. It is a little bit pricey for what you get. Uh, if you're looking for something to take good quality video and photos in the air, uh, let's be honest, this is the best thing out there. That's how their name got to be so big. So if you're looking for a race quad, uh, maybe even something that you can work on in your basement or fix yourself, uh, this isn't it. I hate to say that, but it's just not. Um, there's a lot of other good options out there. But uh, either way, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Any questions, feel free to ask. But please do not forget to hit that like and subscribe button below. Thank you guys. Hope you have a great day.